lion and the shark are some of the most feared and notorious predators known to man. But there's another predator lurking much closer, possibly in your own backyard. But what is a pseudoscorpion? Pseudo means fake or false, so the name pseudoscorpion means false scorpion. However, that's not a great name for the organism. A better name is Chilonithida, which refers to the chile or the claws, which are the defining feature of pseudoscorpions. To learn more about these predators, we tried our best to find pseudoscorpions locally. We consulted with Charles Stephen, a pseudoscorpion expert, on the best way to find pseudoscorpions. So I do leaf litter sampling, do a bulk sample with funnels like we did before. Um, I would just do kind of like a visual survey of a habitat, flipping every single rock until I found one. Or um, I would look for areas where there have been burns, like control burns, and peel back the bark of pine trees, you know, tend to find them underneath the bark. While looking through tree bark and under rocks, we found many springtails and mites. These are both prey of the pseudoscorpion. So they're known to take um, bark lice, Socoptera or Socoidea. Um, they're known to go after springtails, mites, anything smaller they can catch, small larvae of beetles and flies and things like that. Even though we saw springtails and mites, we did not find any pseudoscorpions. So we gathered a bulk sample of leaf litter and topsoil to look through later. We set up a Berlazi funnel to lure out any pseudoscorpions that might be hiding in the leaf litter. First, we put our sample in a funnel and picked out large sticks and leaves. The funnel was placed underneath a light bulb that dries out the sample as it heats up. Any living organisms in the sample would dig deeper to escape the light and heat and to seek moisture deeper in the sample. Underneath the funnel, we placed a cup of ethanol to catch and preserve anything that fell through the funnel. We made sure that there was no open space between the top of the cup and the funnel so that the ethanol would not evaporate. After about a week, we got an assortment of insects, spiders, beetles, centipedes, and other small organisms. With the help from microscopes, we were able to find some pseudoscorpions. Pseudoscorpions range from just a millimeter or two to over a centimeter. Pseudoscorpions in Alabama don't get more than maybe five millimeters. This is Titantamus, the largest pseudoscorpion. It is native to South Africa, and it is much larger than many of its relatives, but it is only slightly larger than a centimeter. Since pseudoscorpions are so small, we had to use a powerful camera to get a clear picture. With this camera, we were able to see very small details and identify which families of pseudoscorpions we were looking at. Pseudoscorpions are in the phylum Arthropoda and subphylum Chelicerata, meaning they have chelicerae or special appendages used in feeding. Spiders are also in this subphylum, but their chelicerae are fangs, while pseudoscorpions chelicerae spin silk. They have spinnerets that they can use to make silk, similar to that of a spider, but pseudoscorpions do not spin webs. Instead, they use their silk to cocoon their eggs or float across bodies of water. They are in the class Arachnida, with spiders and scorpions, but they are not scorpions. Scorpions are in the order Scorpiones, while pseudoscorpions are in the order Pseudoscorpiones. Even though they are not scorpions, they are similar because they have two pedipalps that have chile or claws. Pseudoscorpions can be venomous, but it is not harmful to humans or anything larger than a mite. 
Venomous pseudoscorpions tend to have muscular pedipalps with short, thick claws. On their claws, they have little spike-like structures called venidin, which translates to venom tooth. The non-venomous pseudoscorpions tend to have less muscular pedipalps with long, thin claws. All pseudoscorpions have a carapace and an abdomen, which are covered in an exoskeleton. They can have up to two pairs of eyes, but some are blind and don't have any eyes. Similar to spiders, they have four pairs of legs, and the males tend to be slightly smaller than the females. In some pseudoscorpions, males and females have courtship rituals and they will have a mating dance, similar to many species of birds. Pseudoscorpions mate in a way similar to frogs. The male pseudoscorpion will drop spermatophores and then a female will use the spermatophores to fertilize her eggs. Some species will leave their eggs while others will carry their eggs with them. The females carry their eggs in a sack under their stomach called a brood sack. The young pseudoscorpions will either hatch in a cocoon made by their mother or on their mother's abdomen. Before these young become adults, they have to go through three different nymph stages. As they go through each stage, they become slightly larger and darker as their exoskeleton develops. Pseudoscorpions are a very diverse group of organisms, living in a variety of habitats. They can be found in caves, forests, islands, granite outcrops, and under the bark of living trees. Pseudoscorpions have been in North America since the Devonian, and at that time, North America didn't look like it does now. This pseudoscorpion preserved in amber is from the Cretaceous, which makes this pseudoscorpion about 140 million years old. In a sample from Lake Wilmore Park, we found two pseudoscorpions from the family Neobis eidae. One of the pseudoscorpions was still in its nymph stages, while the other one was an adult. From another sample from Auburn's campus, we found two more pseudoscorpions from a different family. They are from the family Cathoniaidae, more specifically the species Cathonius tetrachelatus. These pseudoscorpions are invasive, while the first ones that we found were a native species. The habitat where the invasive species were found was highly landscaped, and the soil used probably came from a different country, and these pseudoscorpions could have come with it. Uh, most people have countered ticks, so ticks on their, like, crawling on them or something when they're walking in the woods. The pseudoscorpion is about the size of a tick. Not as wide, but about as long. They're predators, so they are living in ecosystems that most people don't usually see on a small scale, and they're the predators of that environment. There are many different species of pseudoscorpions other than the ones we found in our samples, and they are all adapted to fit their environment. Pseudoscorpions that live in caves tend to be blind, while pseudoscorpions that live on islands often use their silk to cocoon themselves on driftwood so that they can float between islands. These are just a few examples of adaptations seen in pseudoscorpions. In the same way that a lion is at the top of its ecosystem's food chain, and there are more gazelles and wildebeest than lions, the pseudoscorpion is at the top of its ecosystem's food chain, and there are more mites and springtails than pseudoscorpions. <laughs>